it's the war hipster here coming at you with another contrast plus painting tutorial and well you've already made it past the title so you know what this is about yes the chapter master himself the big dog the great angel of our time dante has arrived here on the channel yes he's got his rubicon primaris upgraded model and it is absolutely phenomenal it's huge look at it compared to my finger enormous boy and super dynamic and super cool and we're going to be painting him up and i'm very very excited to do so he's been sent to me early by games workshop so a huge 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 thank you to them because well as you all know by now blood angels are my absolute favoritist space marines of all times so i'm very 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 excited and well there's not a lot else to say other than the fact that he has been primed in white scar. Yes, gone for a nice neutral cold tone here because there's a lot of different things going on here. And rather than having kind of dark with the grey sear or kind of too warm with the wraith bone, we want him to be just right. So with all that out of the way, what we're going to do is we're going to jump in and start painting him. The first colour that we're going to be using is some thinned down retributor armour. And we're going to be applying this over the top of all of Dante's armour. There's a couple of additional gold details on the axe, for example. But we're just going to leave them for now. We'll come back to them later. We just want to focus on getting his armour looking absolutely fantastic. So that is what we are going to do. So with that retributor armor applied all the way around, as you can see, what we're now going to do is we're going to shade all of the gold. And the color that we're going to be using for this is a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and fire slayer flesh. We're just going to start layering this on. Just like this. Now we're not using Reichland Flesh Shade, because it's not as strong a shade and we want some really strong shading here for all of the deepest recesses of the gold. You could use that instead if you wanted to be kind of a little bit more subtle in terms of your shading. And the reason we've got that contrast medium in there is so that we've got a little bit more low to the paint so it stays wetter for longer we can move it around and so with that fire slayer flesh and contrast medium mix applied We've got all of our shaded gold here. And well, what we're going to do now is we're going to relayer it. Now the color we're going to be using to do that is some thinned down retributor armor. And what we're looking to do is pick out all of the flat panels of his armor, whilst just avoiding all of the areas where the shade has settled, so all of the recesses and things like that. As you can see, we get this gloriously shiny gold finish. So with that now done, Dante is beautifully shiny all over. 
over once again. However, we're going to continue brightening him up and we're going to do this by making a roughly two parts Liberator Gold to one part Retributorama mix. And we're going to apply this over the top of these kind of outward facing plates. So we want to kind of add that sort of layer of kind of real brightness depending on where our light source is so supposedly meant to be. Now I'm going to have the sun beating down directly on top of Dante. So that means we're going to have areas of kind of shadow and areas of light. So you can see as he's standing like this, if we imagine that our light source is here, that this side of his leg would be somewhat brighter. So we're just going to apply this like this over the top of that little area like that. And then we're going to add a little bit of this to the armor panel just below it. And add some just here. And add some definitely over the top of the leg. Similarly, coming down his right leg, we would have a little bit of brightness just here. Like that. And only about half of this panel. Like that sort of thing. We would bring this all the way around. Like so. And again on the back, only about half of it. We would have the top of the knee and about half of his leg. This would be shinier, as would this. But this section under here would not be shiny, whereas this one would be. So what we're doing is we're looking at kind of creating that sort of false sense of it being a little bit brighter just from certain angles. So for example, if the light bulb was here, where the paints are, this area, so if we like this, it's on the same level, this area here wouldn't necessarily be any brighter, but the top of it absolutely would be. This is kind of a do this if you feel like it's still a stage. You don't have to do this, this is kind of optional. But I just want to have that kind of false sense of extra shine going on on Dante. So that he really just draws the eye. And we don't really, again, we're still not really worrying about areas like the edges of armor panels, because we've got a mix coming up for that as well. So with that now done, we're going to move on from the gold just for a little bit, because what we're going to do is move on to the black details. Now, the color we're going to be using for this is Black Legion, and we're going to be applying this over the top of all of our, well, black details. So this is going to include areas such as the soft joints in his armor. The leather details. The back of his tabard. The Inferno pistol casing. As well as any other details. That you might want to be black. So with all of that Black Legion applied, we're then going to take some Sigvald Burgundy. And I'm going to apply this to the front of the tabard.
And just whilst we wait for that to dry, we're gonna take some Baal Red and we're gonna apply this over the shoulder guard. So whilst we're waiting for both of those reds to dry, we're going to take some Dark Angels Green and we're going to apply this over top of the Laurel. So with that Dark Angels Green now applied, both our red and our burgundy are dry. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Blood Angels Red and we're gonna apply this over the top of both of these colors. So with that Blood Angels Red all applied, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna take Apothecary White and we're gonna apply this over top of all of our, what are going to be bright white details. So we've got all of the kind of winged insignia scattered about. And so with all that Apothecary White applied, we're then gonna take some Skeleton Horde and we're gonna apply this over top of all of our paper. And so with that Skeleton Horde applied, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some thinned down lead belcher and we're going to apply this over the top of pretty much all of our remaining details on Dante. We're not going to be doing this again. We're just saving the axe till later, which might not make a whole lot of sense, but trust me, it will. So we're going to <laughs> apply this over the top of areas such as the mechanical areas of the gun and his backpack. So with that silver all applied, it's now time to work on the axe. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a series of layers and blends to kind of create a background for all the lightning. And then we'll do the lightning a lot later on. So the color we're gonna be using first is Frost Heart. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get this over the entirety of the axe blade. And so with that frost heart all applied, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna take two colors, Asamon blue and contrast medium. And we're gonna use these at the same time. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna load up our brush with Asamon blue first. And we're gonna apply this over the top of the entire of the ax head. And then we're gonna use the contrast medium to add a little bit of blending in there. So we're gonna use the Asamon blue first and we're gonna very quickly just apply this over the top of the whole of the ax blade. Just like that. We're then gonna wash the brush and grab some contrast medium. And then around the power nodes, we're gonna add this like that. You wanna move really quickly here. A little bit more contrast medium. 
it on the power node again, like that. A little bit more contrast medium. And then on the blade itself, we want to add effectively two little blobs. Just like that sort of thing. Don't worry if it's a little bit rough. We are going to sort that out in just a minute. So with that now done, what we do is we take a roughly two parts contrast medium to one part Leviathan blue mix. And we kind of roughly do the same thing, only this time we're going to kind of do it in reverse. So we're going to load up our brush here and we're going to apply this Leviathan blue and contrast medium mix over the top of the whole of the axe face. Like that, getting a nice smooth coat. And then we wash the brush and then just with a clean brush, we move the paint around Like this. Grab a little bit more actually. Just gonna add some in there. Very gently add some in there. And so with that now done, we then take a roughly two parts contrast medium to one part black Templar mix. I'm gonna be really targeted here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start down here towards the base of the ax. I'm gonna apply this coming up like so. We're gonna wash the brush. Then we're just gonna reverse the model. And then we're just gonna smooth out the transition so we get that kind of fade through the colors into the black. We're gonna take a little tiny bit of this. I'm gonna apply some of it right between our two dots. Like that. We're then gonna wash the brush. And smooth out the transition just a bit. And just moving it around. And then we're going to do the same thing across the top. Like so. Wash the brush. And then smooth out those transitions. And then we're just going to add the black where of anywhere else that we want to. So I'm going to add a little bit of it in here. Like that. I'm going to wash and then smooth. Just like this. So that done, you should have a pretty awesome looking axe blade for now. It's not finished, of course, but we are going to come back to it a little bit later. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take some Sigvald Burgundy and we're going to apply this over the top of the soft grip on the weapon. And with that Sigvald Burgundy applied, we're then going to take some thinned down Iron Warriors and we're going to apply this over the top of all of the mechanical areas of the axe itself.
And with that done, we then take some apothecary white. We apply this over the top of the winged skull. And with that then done, we take some Retributor armor. We apply this over the remaining details on the axe. So with that now done, all of our base coats are now on on Dante. So it is time to shade him. And the color we're gonna be using first to do this is Null Oil. I'm going to be using this to shade all of the black and all of the silver. And with that done, we're then going to take some Fire Slayer Flash. We're apply this over top of the gold on the axe. We don't need to thin it down because there's very, very little of this. So with that Reichland flesh shade all applied, Dante is now what I would call a war hipster battle ready. And he's looking pretty fantastic. However, there are still a number of things left to do to take him to the next level. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So the first thing we're gonna do, and this is optional, is to take some Agrax Earth shade. I'm gonna use this to add a very, very, very narrow recess shade in all the gold. This is going to add that kind of element of the more antique set of armor to him, as well as really just make all of those gold panels pop. So with that recess shade applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to highlight all of the gold using a roughly two parts Stormhose Silver to one part Retributor Armor mix. And what we're going to do, we're just going to take a small amount of this on our brush at a time. We're just going to start picking out all of the edges. So with that Retributor Armor and Stormhose Silver mix applied, all of the gold is now finished and you have an absolutely beautifully shiny Commander Dante. <laughs> Love it. Right, it's time to move on now to our next color, which is going to be all of the black. Now the color that we're gonna be using to highlight this first is Eshin Gray. And we're gonna be doing all of the black at once here excluding the axe, because, well, that's dark blue. So with that ashen gray all applied, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some thinned down Dawnstone and we're gonna use this to add some additional highlights to our solid black detail. So this is going to be, for example, on the gun and on the shoulder greaves, but for areas such as the kind of soft joints in the armor, we're gonna be doing a different color. So you don't need to do those bits just yet. So we're gonna take that thinned down Dawnstone 
I'm going to start applying this. around the areas that we want to be nice and light. So we've got this corner, for example, on the shoulder pad. Take it around to about, about there. And we bring it down like so. And then we're also going to take it up that end. I'm going to use this to highlight the top corner. Just like that sort of thing. We will do some more on the shoulder, but another example here is we want to add the Dawnstone kind of to the top edges of our gun. Like that sort of thing. And then we just want to bring it down a little bit. like this sort of thing. And so just to finish off these solid black details, we're going to take some Administratum Grey. I'm going to add this to the hard corners and the rivers. Rivers? Rivets. So with that done, all of our hard black details are now finished. So what we can do is move on to the soft black details. So this is the joints between his armor, the back of his tabard, and his leather. And the color that we're gonna be using to highlight these next, after we did our Russian gray originally, is some thinned down Thunderhawk blue. This is much like we did with the Dawnstone. So with that Thunderhawk blue all applied, we're then going to take some Fenrisian grey. I'm going to use this to add a little spot highlight to all those soft black details. So, for example, just there on the soft joints in his abdomen. Just want to add a tiny little highlight like that. I'm going to pick out the little corners. Like that sort of thing. So with that done, all of the black details are now finished all the way around on Dante. Looking pretty cool. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to the white. Now this is going to be a little bit easier, although it is quite tricky. <laughs> so shut up, war hipster. What we're going to do is we're going to take some thin down white scar. Now we're basically going to do a set of relays on our large white details, which there aren't many. So we've got like the kind of frame of the wings, but for the rest of it. We're just going to do a little highlight. And 
needs to be really bright white details. So with all of that white scar applied, all of the white details are now finished. So we're gonna move on to the laurel. And the color we're gonna be using to highlight this is moot green. And so with that done, we're then going to once again take a really tiny amount of white scar. And we're just going to add this to the absolute tips. So with that done, we can now move on to the next detail, and this is going to be all the silver. Now the color we're gonna be using first here is some thins down lead belcher. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna re-layer all of our armor silver. So for example, this bit here around the back on the backpack. We've got the jet turbines up here. And that sort of thing. Whereas on the gun and on the axe, what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight. So with that lead belt all applied, we're then gonna take some storm host silver. I'm gonna add this to the sharpest points and features of light on all the silver. So we've got, for example, that curve there on the gun. And we've got this little section up there like that. But what we're also gonna do, is gonna add a little bit of Stormhouse Silver to the sharp tips in the gold. So with that now done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some thinned down Evil Sun's Scarlet. I'm gonna use this to highlight the burgundy and the red. And so with that done, we then want to take a tiny, tiny little dot of Cadian Flesh Tone. We want to add this in the sharpest points. Our red. So with that Cadian flesh tone applied, all of the red is finished, so we're gonna move on to all of the parchment. And the color we're gonna be using to highlight this is Screaming Skull. With 
And so with that screaming skull all applied, it's now time to move on to the axe head. Now the color we're gonna be using first here is Araman Blue. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna firstly use this to add some really, really fine highlights on all of the hard edges of the axe. Like this and what we're going to do is we're going to start drawing in our lightning like that it's going to be very fine at first but that's okay what we want. So with that Araman blue applied, as you can see, what we're now going to do is we're going to take Lothurn blue and we're going to do much the same thing here and we're going to do less of it. So for example, on our highlights, I'm just going to pick out the top edge like so. And we're going to pick out the cutting edge. Like that. And then across the kind of tang of the blade, what we're going to do is going to add the Lothurn blue. over the top where we've got our little energy blobs going on. Just like that. Add a little bit towards this bottom kind of corner here. And there. We're going to highlight, or well, we're going to block in the power node. And then along the wire, we're going to do about half of it. Like so, and then we're going to trace over the top of our lightning. So with that Lothurn blue applied, as you can see, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna take some Baharoth blue and we're gonna be super narrow here with what we're doing. So we're gonna apply it over about half of the power node. Like that. We're gonna apply it over half of what we've done On the 
cable. Like that. I'm going to apply this to the sharp corners. On the axe and then along the cutting edge, I'm going to apply this from the top, coming down to where it curves, like so. And then, additionally, on lightning, we're going to apply really tiny little bits of this. Generally where the forks interact. And so with that done, to finish off the axe, we're gonna take a tiny, teeny, tiny little dot of white scar and we're going to apply this at the absolute sharpest points. Across the model. and all the lightning. So with that done, the axe blade is now finished. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. So <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue with the white scar just for the moment. And we're actually just gonna apply quite a wide blob of it almost, right in the middle of the jet turbines. Like that, and we're going to highlight the inner section. Just like that. Whilst we're waiting for that white scar to dry, we're gonna take some Blood Angels Red and we're gonna apply this over the top of all of our teardrops. So with that Blood Angels Red applied to all those teardrops, what we're then gonna do is take Frost Heart because of the back of him is now dry in the jet, jet pack. 
And we're going to apply this. Don't need very much, that's way too much. I'm going to apply this over the top of where we did the white and where we highlighted. And inside there as well. So with that done, it is once again back to White Scar, where we're going to add a little dot of this at the top of each of the gems. And so with that white scar applied, we're then going to take some Fire Dragon Bright. I'm going to add a little highlight of this in the bottom right corner. To each of our gems. So with that done, Dante is now finished and he looks absolutely fantastic. However, there is one last thing to do, and that is to take some Saigor Brown, and we're gonna do some writing on all of his parchment. Now, the main one to show you is going to be on his shoulder, just here. Well, we're gonna be writing his own name, Dante. Now, the best way to do this, I found, is we're gonna take the Saigor Brown, not very much of this on our brush, and we're gonna pick right in the middle, because Dante is a five letter word. So what we can do is we can start by writing the N. Like that. So now we know how much space we've got to do DA and TE. So what we can do is we can go back this way. I'm going to start with the A. Like that. And then for the D. Got that space just there. So now we've got Commander Dan. <laughs> so now we need to do the T and the E.
like that. So now he is Commander Dante. However, what we're going to do just to make it look even cooler is we're going to continue with the cycle brown and we're going to add little lines next to each of the letters towards the left hand side. And there's a little line like that. Draw it across like this. Like that. Like that. Lengthen out that T a little bit. And there we have it. Commander Dante is now finished. I mean, we've already done him once for the channel in his old resin fine cast version, but this is the brand new, no holds barred, take no prisoners, incredible new plastic version. And I'm so excited to have him lead my Blood Angels at long last from the front in glorious plastic and appropriately sized next to Mephiston, for example, who is an absolute giant. <laughs> Seriously, he's absolutely massive. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you'd like to support me further, you absolutely can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster, just like these bosses have done scrolling up on the screen before you whose continued support helps me continue to make all the wonderful content that you enjoy alternatively you could become a youtube channel member by clicking on the join button on the channel page or just below this video like these wonderful amazing people have done and if you really like this video and you just want to shoot me a little thanks you can click on the thanks button just below this video don't forget to share it like it comment on it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to make sure you stay up to date don't forget to click the bell icon thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all very soon in the next one happy wargaming